Hey there, UPSL fans. My name is Bradford Evans, and in this edition of This Week in the UPSL, we're going all across the United States of America to the Mid-South, Northeast, Western area of the U.S., and the Southeast. So it should be a good show. We have highlights, interviews, and more. So stay tuned and buckle your seatbelts. Let's go ahead and see how things are going in the Mid-South Conference. Bowling Green FC against Music City Soccer Club. Bowling Green FC having a pretty darn good season so far. They're on the left side of your screen in the white jerseys, whereas Music City wearing the gold kits. Here comes first opportunity. What a climbing header there, almost in the back of the net. A good thinking, though, as play continues here for Music City Soccer Club. Saved by the keeper there on the near post shot. Then here comes a low driven shot that goes into the back of the net. It's now 1-0 for Bowling Green. And then here comes a little bit of a fancy set piece, then a cross to go with it. And uh, just offline there on the shot. So it's 1-0 right now as play continues. Here comes Bowling Green FC. Look at the move into the back of the net after breaking past a few players. A pretty good move there. 2-0 now for Bowling Green FC. As we have another opportunity for Bowling Green, a laser is parried away. And then Music City on the right side now. And a shot has a bit of a dip and then goes in the back of the net. Mistake by the keeper, but it was a difficult shot to deal with. 2-1 and now 3-1 off of the deflection for Bowling Green FC. So that's the final score, 3-1. to one. Quickly transitioning, we United FC against Pumas Premier. Pumas Premier on the right side of your screen in the red kits. We United wearing the blue kits. Anyway, there's a nice touch for Pumas Premier. And uh, that is a nice finish. A bit lucky, but a nice finish as well. Uh, so, Pumas Premier take the lead 1-0. And here comes another opportunity. A shot is saved. So... Still 1-0. Now we United get through on the breakaway. And a good finish there uh, from Paulo Nizako. And uh, Pumas Premier continue their onslaught or their attack. Could it turn into an onslaught? No, not there. It's still 1-1. Uh, nobody leading. An even game so far in this highlight. Keeper comes out and gets chipped. Nope. He uh, actually, luckily, didn't get chipped. Anyway, it's 1-1 now, and there comes another goal. Nice finish from Puma's Premier. Now ball back with We United. Good through ball. Keeper is way out of position. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, out past the 18-yard box, and he pays for it. It's 2-2 up to this point. That was uh, Nizako again scoring. And then we united scoring with Nedzako. He had four goals in this game. You're going to see all four. I don't want to give anything away, but I kind of just did. Anyway, ball bouncing around. Keeper finally grabs it. It stays 3-2. to two. And then a hit upfield past the back line. Can we united run onto it? And guess who? That is Paulo Nedzako again. So, uh, Puma's Premier doing pretty fantastic in the beginning, and then uh, We United taking the lead later in the game, and uh, We United get another goal. 5-2 to two is the score right now. Uh, Puma's Premier trying to get some goals back, and uh, that is a way to get the goal back. Could that be in our top goal of the week? 5-3, to three, though, the final score. And now we move over to the Northeastern Conference. AC Commonwealth against Dream FC. AC Commonwealth wearing the dark kits and Dream FC wearing the yellows as play gets underway uh, with 
AC Commonwealth pressing here. And Dream FC Keeper picks it up before anything bad could happen. Low dribbling shot on the next highlight for Commonwealth, and they can't score. Here comes another one. And somebody gets on the end of it, but the keeper pushes it wide. So it stays nil-nil. Commonwealth really dominating here in the early highlights. A shot is saved, so it is a dream start for the goalkeeper of Dream FC. Pun intended. Anyway, now it's 1-0 after that finish from AC Commonwealth. Justin Wilson puts it into the net. Another chance coming for Commonwealth. Edge of the 18. Keeper comes up big again. Then finally Dream FC get a half chance there. It's near post. And the final score in this ball game, one to nothing. And as we look at the standings, Commonwealth have 16 points. They're in third place currently. Let's see how things are shaping up over on the West Coast in the Western Conference. Now, Elk Grove Blues against Vacaville Elite. Elk Grove Blues and Vacaville is a NorCal matchup. Elk Grove Blues, guess what uh, kit they're wearing? They're wearing the blue kit, in case you didn't notice from their name. Anyway, as action gets started, uh, we see the ball on the far side. And uh, first chance coming right after the kickoff here. And a dribbling shot is uh, not going to trouble the keeper too much, but still good job to test him within 30 seconds. And there's a shot there by Vacaville Elite. Then a cross in. It loops over the top of the post, but some uh, good stuff there from uh, Vacaville. And here come Elk Grove Blues back the other way. There's a goal. That one is finished. It's now one to nothing for Elk Grove Blues. Uh, good finish by Christian Kakudu. Another chance for Elk Grove. Pushed up and away. So it stays 1-0 for the time being. And Elk Grove trying to get past the keeper there. That is Kevin Kamora. And he almost scores once and almost scores twice, but it bounces off the post. And it stays 1-0 for now. And as we see, the ball's back without Groves, but a poor touch leads to an open chance for Vacaville Elite. Can they finish? They can. That was Mario Gutierrez who scored. Okay, now over to the Southeastern Conference. Naples City FC against Tampa FC. Naples City wearing those uh, classic striped kits with the yellow bottoms. And Tampa on the left side of your screen looking like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of the NFL in the pewter. Anyway, don't know if they wanted to do that on purpose or not, but uh, I like the kits. Anyway, first chance coming for Tampa FC, it's saved, and here comes Naples City back the other way. Uh, shot smoked to the left side. Tampa FC try to get that into the net, and it's pushed away. And here come Naples City FC on the next opportunity. Good cross, plenty of height. It's headed clear for the time being, but another cross that is... Uh, Fantastic, and it goes into the back of the net. Keeper should have gotten that one, but Naples City is going to take it. Uh, they score. Jason Marquinha Gonzalez scored that one. 1-0 one now for Naples City. Low driven cross by Tampa, and what a finish there. Sliding down and uh, putting that one home. It's 1-1, one, one. and here come Naples City FC on the right side. That already worked for them once with the winger. And it falls out to the edge of the 18-yard box, and the keeper 
Can't get it because of the deflection. 2-1 to one for Naples City FC. Jason Marquinhos Gonzalez again scoring. Tampa FC, though, trying to answer back. A heading cross is put in, and it is saved. And Naples City trying to get another one to go into the back of the net, try to add to their lead. Can they do so as the ball's kind of ping-ponging around? And there is a shot that is saved. So 2-1 up until this next chance for Naples. Nice through ball and the finish leaving a little bit to be desired. And the final score though, Naples City win 2-1 over Tampa FC. Siguiendo las indicaciones del profe, eh, desde que empezamos venimos jugando bien, venimos entrenando, eh, siempre dando al 100, eh, siguiendo todo eh, como el profe nos indica. Y bueno, hoy se dio el resultado, salimos del primer momento a presionar. Up next, Stosi Academy U23s against Leg AZ International. Interesting name and interesting kits for Leg AZ International who are wearing the reddish kits as you see the first opportunity coming for International. It's deflected away by the center back. Good clearance. It stays one or nil nil. And here come OC Academy. Good finish there. Scored by Cameron Lacey. It's one nil for Orlando City. Then long ball played to the right flank in the half space and then crossed and smothered by the goalkeeper. It stays 1-0 and OC Academy continue to lead this one as we see International coming back on the left now. What a move, what a finish. That's scored by Daniel Martin. Uh, Nice job, he ties it up. It's 1-1, there's a really bad pass Over the center of the pitch, it's going to be intercepted, as you see, and finished. Can't be doing that. Daniel Martin scores. Now it's 2-1. OC Academy are trailing. But uh, can they get back? If they score off of this, they can. And it's a low cross. Nobody gets to it. It bounces off the tip of the post and then comes back out again. Attacker falls into the box, and they're going to award a penalty to Gustavo Curiel, who is blocked, and then he finishes. So good effort by the goalkeeper of getting down and blocking. It's very hard to block a penalty kick, but he did that. So 2-2 right now. International are on the back foot a bit as an overhead kick attempt is almost put in for OC Academy. Then International on the left. It's... Daniel Martin crossing it in. That was almost spectacular, but uh, it's followed up by a powerful finish. Uh, Jaden Jones Riley scoring that one, three to two now. And then a good save, maybe a game saving save by the goalkeeper as play continues for OC Academy. They're down by one goal. They need a goal bad. Can they get one on the right side? Uh, Movement from the winger crossed in. And there's your goal. It's scored by Ali Pereira. So it's 3-3 right now, and that was a good save. It was going to go wide, but still, nice job by the goalie. And we see another attempt by OC Academy. We just have unlimited attempts here. And we we see this nice 1-2. Good movement off of the ball. That's how you do it in the attacking third. And that's how you finish in the attacking third. Ali Pereira scoring for OC Academy. And that is going to be the game winner. 4-3, the final score. Time to look at the Florida Central standings. OFC Barca and OC Academy are in first and second. Time for a look inside our Club of the Week. The director executive of Miramar United Elite FC, Richard Jobson, is going to talk about his team. And we kind of started off on, on the concept of trying to get kids into college. And, you know, I think we've succeeded in, in that goal of getting most of our kids into college, which is a, a very attainable goal inside here in the United States or in South Florida. Well, we have, you know, we kind of evolved and, and the reason why we joined UPSL was 
we we had a lot of kids in college. We have a lot of talent in 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 the universities here in the United States. And what we did was they needed a place to play to to keep to get them in shape, keep them in shape in the summer. So what we did was we we said, okay, we we're gonna the kids who graduated are left our our club. It's something to come back to, but also we have several players that's from our our youth academy that is playing in this league. So really to push them so they can go to college and 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 be in that starting left. Well, it's a growing league, and uh, our players, it's 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 it, it. I think it's the bridge between becoming a a real professional and and becoming you know to the big leagues whether the kids aspire to play in the MLS or USL or even into Europe. I think, you know, getting the kids to play at a higher level against the best players, you know, in the United States or in Florida. And I, I think UPSL was, was the, the right transition for our club. Okay, back to the next game. Atlanta Elephants versus Atletico Atlanta. Atletico Atlanta having a rough season after they won the national championship last year. They're in the Black Hits and Atlanta Elephants getting the first opportunity. Look at this cheeky little move. And he gets past the goalkeeper, but he is fouled in the box. And that's Alpha Balde who's going to go up and take the penalty kick. And it's a good one. 1-0. One for Atlanta Elephants. And then some shaky defending leads to another opportunity for Atlanta Elephants. On the left, good save. Uh, good strike too, but, but even better by the goalkeeper. Anyway, ball cleared upfield. Bad touch by the center back. Now a one-on-one. -on -one. And will it be finished? Yeah, it's finished pretty easily. Uh, nice goal there from Atlanta Elephants. They take a 2-0 lead over Atletico Atlanta. And Atletico Atlanta, last-ditch defending on the left. And what's that going to be? Is that going to be a penalty kick? It is. Balde steps up again and puts it into the back of the net. 3 to nothing up until this point. As uh, Balde's having himself a heck of a game here. Now on the right... Will the ball be crossed in? It's at the edge of the 18-yard box. Dancing around, shifting, and finishing. Beautiful move there. And that was Alpha Balde scoring. Actually, that was Mustafa Dante, pardon me. So it's 4-0 for the time being. Can Atletico Atlanta get anything going? They're really struggling this season, which is just such a surprise. Uh, formerly Jenga Atlanta last year. And then they had the name change and, and things changed. Anyway, that is deflected away. And uh, we'll see what the official says. He says it's a penalty scored by Castro Welder. So he gets one back. It's 4-1. to one, And that is the final score. Atlanta Elephants take the victory. Up next for Atlanta Elephants, a matchup against LSA Lemeño. So that should be tough. Now on to the top goals of the week presented by SCORE. Uh, we usually have a plethora of them that are pretty good. This time we have seven. Olympiacos DC, Lynchburg FC is who they were playing in a 4-3 to three loss. There was a pretty sweet goal. And so, you know, a consolation there. But still, they did not beat Lynchburg FC. But they probably had the best goal of the match. Or did they? We don't know yet as we're at number six now. FC Midland against Detroit Union FC. Uh, they won this game 3-2, to two, and that's thanks to this beauty. Uh, look at that. It was like a laser that was just guided into the back of the net. As you can see on the right, it just dips over the keeper's head, had pace, had finesse, had everything. Number five now. SC Heat. Ball crossed in. Spills to the edge of the 18-yard box. Is the ball going to be headed? It is volleyed. Uh, that's a heck of a goal. As uh, SC Heat get the victory over Moros FC. And uh, that's a big reason why there. 
Number four, OC Academy U23 is against Inner Jacks FC. And uh, there's a finish to the left. And uh, good goal. Uh, just kind of finessed it in. Nice uh, pace. Nice. Just good goal overall. Anyway, number three now. Florida Fusion SC. And their loss to Miami Sun. Uh, that's a good goal to go with it. I, consolation again. I always bring that up when they don't win. But uh, uh, he's going to remember that goal for quite a long time. Maybe one of the best he's ever scored. Uh, Miami Sun S F C. Going back again, a chip. Bit lucky, but I'm, I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to say that uh, the attacker meant to do that and give him the benefit of the doubt. Number one now. This better be good. Miramar United Elite FC. Okay, I can already tell. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's all I can say. Look at him juggling around at, almost at midfield and then just blasts it. I mean, that was sensational. That's as good of a goal as you could ever see. And that's it for our top goals of the week presented by SCORE. Well, everybody, we've had highlights, we've had interviews, top goals. We've done it all here on this week of the UPSL. So I leave you now. Until next time, everybody, my name is Bradford Evans. Have a wonderful weekend.